Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. In 1955, Alfred Hitchcock gave us a black comedy film that was called The Trouble with Harry. Its screenplay was done by John Michael Hayes, and it was based on a 1950 novel by Jack Trevor Story. The movie stars Edmund Gwynn, John Forsyth, Mildred Natwick, Jerry Mathers, and Shirley MacLaine in her film debut. Now, if you'll notice, the second to the last name that I said was Jerry Mathers, and that's the Jerry Mathers that we know as Beaver from Leave it to Beaver. Although he's so much younger, he's barely recognizable as the days that he was on Leave it to Beaver. The movie was released in September of 1955, and then it was re-released in 1984, once the distribution rights had been acquired by Universal Pictures. As many of you probably know, Alfred Hitchcock is notorious for doing a cameo in every one of his films, and it's kind of a fun thing to do to try to spot him. He's a little bit harder to spot in this film. I'm not going to tell you where it's at, but somewhere in these profile pictures in my video, you'll see this cameo. Post a comment when you see it and let me know where you noticed it. Most of his are pretty obvious, but this one is not. If you have trouble finding it, stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you exactly where it's at. The action in the movie takes place during a summer-filled autumn in the Vermont countryside. The fall foliage and the beautiful scenery around the town, as well as the score that's done by Bernard Herman, all set an amazing tone for the movie. The storyline goes that a well-dressed deceased man is found in a meadow clearing in the hills above this small Vermont town. Captain Albert Wiles discovers the body and learns from the man's identification that his name is Harry Warp. Captain Wiles believes he's accidentally shot Harry while he was hunting rabbits, and he decides to hide the body instead of reporting it to the authorities. As Captain Wiles is in the adjacent forest, he witnesses other people stumbling across Harry, most of whom seem indifferent to his death. One person who does notice Captain Wiles is a spinster by the name of Ivy Gravely, but she promises not to divulge his secret. The captain also sees a young single mother, Jennifer Rogers, who appears to be happy about Harry's death. Later, a struggling artist named Sam Marlowe comes across both Harry and Captain Wiles, and the captain reveals the entire story of what he has witnessed so far. Throughout this day, various revelations raise doubts about whether the captain actually killed Harry. The individual and collective actions of Sam, Miss Rogers, Captain Wiles, and Miss Gravely take into account friendship, self-preservation, the path of least resistance, love, and the consequences of their past actions. However, their efforts may be in vain if Deputy Sheriff Calvin Wiggs, the closest thing to law enforcement in the town, discovers the truth about Harry. The movie is one of Hitchcock's few comedies. Although most of his films did have some element of tongue-in-cheek in them or some macabre humor, this one was mainly a comedy, and it contained what for that time was considered very frank dialogue in it. One example of this is when John Forsyth's character tells Shirley MacLaine's character that he would love to paint a nude portrait of her. That statement was extremely explicit 
for that time in the 50s. This movie was unavailable for three decades because its rights, together with four other films from that same period, were bought back by Alfred Hitchcock and left as part of his legacy to his daughter Patricia when he died. These five films were known as the Lost Hitchcock Movies. The others was Rope from 1948, Rear Window from 1954, The Man Who Knew Too Much from 1956, and Vertigo from 1958. All excellent films. The project was also Hitchcock's experiment to see how audiences would react to a non-star-driven film. He was of the opinion that oftentimes having a big star attached actually hindered the narrative flow and style of the story. Location filming was all done in Vermont, but it was hampered by a lot of heavy rainfall. Many of the exterior scenes had to be filmed on sets that were constructed in a local high school gymnasium. But after filming was done, much of the dialogue had to be re-recorded because the original voices were inaudible due to the rainfall on the tin roof. Now the character of Harry the Dead Man is played by a character actor named Philip Truax. In 1955, he was offered this part in the movie by Hitchcock himself. Initially, he was so excited about this because everyone wanted to work with Hitchcock, and he was playing the character that the movie was named after. His excitement soon turned to disappointment when he learned that his part didn't have any dialogue in it at all and that he would play only a corpse. The trouble with Harry was the theatrical debut of Shirley MacLaine. And unlike Hitchcock's other leading ladies, MacLaine became an off-screen companion as well. He took her to breakfast every day before shooting and then would take her out to dinner at night. He never propositioned her, but he thought of her as a girl who needed to be fed having been plucked from the poverty-stricken life of a Broadway chorus girl. And this was an exciting and pleasant change for McLean. As a result of this, she gained 15 pounds during shooting. And this resulted in a phone call from the studio telling her to stop eating so much as it was going to ruin her career before it ever began. And you really can tell a difference in a few of the shots. You can tell she's plumped up a little bit. Go back and watch this movie. It's a good one, but it's not what you expect from Hitchcock. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.